The Doldrums by Nicholas Gannon. <laughs> Hold your horses, Link, it is not that Gannon. This is Gannon's debut novel, and not only did he manage to write a very charming book, but he also did all of these whimsical illustrations that you see on the cover and throughout the book. There's actually a generous amount of them. Um, now, I kind of wish I went and bought the hardcover, because the hardcover, all of the illustrations are in color, and it uses kind of like a muted palette that really, really suits this art style. And I just have to say, this art style is so perfect for a middle grade series. I might actually go and trade this paperback in just so I can get the hard copy with the colored illustrations. What is this black and white stuff? I want it in color. But illustrations aside, let's start off by talking about the story. The story follows young Archer Helmsley, and he is grandson to renowned explorers Rachel and Ralph Helmsley, and he looks up to them immensely despite having never have met them. And on his ninth birthday, it's discovered that his grandparents have been lost in Antarctica after being stranded on an iceberg, and they're most likely dead. Now, Archer grows up living in the Helmsley house, which is owned by his grandparents, uh, but he lives there with his parents, and Helmsley house is this fun, wacky, odd house. Like, there's taxidermied animals all over the place. There's uh, giraffes, penguins, uh, polar bears, ostriches, badgers. There's just a ton of animals everywhere. However, Archer's parents do not have that same adventurous spirit that him and his grandparents have. In fact, his mother goes so far as to basically locking him in the house besides allowing him to go to school um, because she is afraid that he's going to end up on an iceberg or something similar. She doesn't want any of the grandparents' influence getting into his head. But what she doesn't really put into perspective is that Archer is a young boy, so he ends up fueling his imagination and basically making him want to go on a big adventure because he's stuck in a house all day. So he ends up talking to the taxidermy animals and making up these little adventures and planning to one day go to Antarctica and save his grandparents. Now the story is set up in three different parts. The first part introduces the characters. We have Archer and his parents. Uh, then later on he meets a boy named Oliver next door who becomes his friend and they meet up on Archer's balcony and on his roof to kind of plan this adventure. And then the next friend he meets who joins in on the plan is a young Parisian girl named Adelaide Belmont, pardon my French, um, and she's actually my favorite character, not only because she has uh, a, a more in-depth backstory, but she also likes croissants and coffee, and she has a wooden leg. Wooden legs are pretty cool. And uh, then the second part is them planning some more, and the third part, I'm not going to spoil anything. Next, I'm going to be talking about the writing, and I really enjoyed the writing. I was actually kind of surprised when I went to Goodreads, and I found some people saying that this book was too boring and too slow, and I, I don't, I didn't find that at all. Like, honestly, I read the majority of this book in one day, and I really, really enjoyed it. For me, the writing was the best part about the doldrums. Gannon uses a lot of wordplay and a lot of literary devices. I mean, he uses alliteration here and there, but what I really, really enjoyed was how he implemented humor. It wasn't, it wasn't laugh out loud humor, but it was... Uh, like subtle humor that definitely gave a smile to my face and sometimes he would put it near the beginning of the book and then he'd use that same type of humor later on in the book to kind of connect the two pieces and I just really loved the way he wrote this book. Just the writing and the description of characters and the world, I just really loved it all and it reminded me a lot of uh, Lemony Snicket's um, the series of unfortunate events. It doesn't really have that same kind of creepy feel, um, but the way that Ganon uses wordplay is very reminiscent of Lemony Snicket's writing. Now, I can't agree that if you were expecting, like, a big adventure in this book, um, then you might be a little bit let down. I wasn't really looking for that when I, when I started reading this book. I didn't really know much about it, and I ended up really enjoying it, but it's kind of building up for the second book. I think the second book is going to be really, really good, and I've actually already started reading it, and I can say that the beginning of it is very good. I'm excited to review the second book. I'm hoping to do that fairly soon. So I thoroughly enjoyed the doldrums. I found it to be a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the writing style. It almost felt like I was reading a cartoon, but not like an overly obnoxious one, um, but I really, really enjoyed it. And if it, this sounds like something you would enjoy, then you probably will. So I hope you like this review. And if it sounds interesting from what I said, then feel free to click the link down below where you can buy a copy of this book. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll leave a link to everything down below. And if you like this video, and want to see more videos like it then feel free to subscribe and like and I will see you guys uh, next time. I'm really excited to see what Nicholas Gannon writes next. Like, I hope that this series is going to be fairly long. I mean, at least three books, but I wonder if he's going to write, like, a different series with the same type of art style, because I would find that really cool. Um, right now I'm reading the second book in the doldrums, and I got the hardcover edition, so I have the colored illustrations, and I'm loving it.